Luke chapter uh, 15. Uh, Amen. Sometimes we go through things and um, I think the Lord teaches us that if we just try and make that step, He'll see us and follow us through. Amen. Um, pretty proud of my hubby, our pastor. Throughout the week, we're he uh, testified in front of uh, uh, a bunch of the through the reunion and and um, I know it, it can be challenging to do something like that but um, I know that no matter what if we look to him he'll help help us through that through what we need to do and um, my hubby he did a good job I videoed him and uh, I gave a holler too I deleted it <laughs> <laughs> so I praise him for my hubby and for my family for the church family here amen yeah I think I said something about it this morning. I don't know what I said this morning, but to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, Tina Ruggiero was our English <coughs> teacher and freshman year of school. And uh, she would make you get up and read your book reports or, or whatever uh, in front of the whole class. And uh, I told some of the my classmates afterwards. I said my knees had shook like that since I'm getting up in front of Tina Rogeria. <laughs> I hated doing it, getting in front of Tina Rogeria. <laughs> I uh, I debated on whether or not I would even attend. I really felt impressed that God wanted me to do that. So I, we ended up going, and um, I'm thankful. Thankful. Like I said, <laughs> it's been one of the hardest things I've had to do for a long time. But in those moments, you got to let God do His thing. And, uh, I give Him all the glory. <laughs> All for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Well, I want to... <laughs> I guess that's a good uh, lead into what we're going to be uh, talking about uh, this evening. And, and that is the fact that uh, Jesus <laughs> uh, received sinners. Uh, that's that's our mission, church. Uh, that's the great commission: go ye into all the world and make Christ like disciples. That's the mission of of the church, and we're going to look at Luke chapter fifteen tonight uh, as we look into this passage of scripture and try to see exactly what we're talking about and how Jesus went about doing this and how he relayed some of the things to the people. But Luke chapter 15 is probably one of the most valuable chapters in God's Word because it shows the importance of things that are lost. In fact, many have referred to this chapter as the gospel within the gospel. Uh, and and the original audience for this passage and for this scripture uh, was a group of indignant scribes and Pharisees, those who were resentful of Jesus and irate at what he was doing and what was going on. 
and and so it's addressed to them. And and this chapter has really three separate parables, but all of them have a common theme. And that theme is that God's compassion that He has for the lost. He has a compassion for the lost. Unless we have compassion and really care about lost souls, we, we won't get involved in evangelizing. We won't get involved in, in doing the Great Commission. I want us to understand tonight, if we don't get anything else out of this, that the Great Commission is not a request. The Great Commission is a command that we go into all the world. That means in, in our homes, in our families, in our schools, in our workplaces, in our, in our social lives, in our uh, 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 grocery stores and post offices, and, 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 and to develop relationship in all of these areas that we are involved in. Uh, it, 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 it's not, we're, they're not going to come in I mean, they don't even know we're down here, <laughs> okay? There's no way here except for if you on purposely come here now. And so we, ha we have to have that, that compassion for the loss. I'm going to bring that, I'm gonna bring that Louise Chapman's book in. Uh, we've got some new books for missionary. We'll probably hand them out Wednesday night, but I might bring that, 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 that missionary book of Louise Chapman uh, in and, and, and put it in our readings again. Maybe some of you have read it in the past, but uh, it, it's a great read as well. In fact, I think one of the books uh, that we have this year is, is, is uh, uh, some of the, her writings, I think. Anyhow, these parables that we're going to look at this evening present us with a picture of, of God. The, the first picture of, uh, that we see in, in the parables here is that of a good shepherd. That of a good shepherd. In fact, in verse 3, or, or chapter uh, uh, 15, verse 3 through 7, it says, So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in, in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing, and he comes home and he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who re repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Heaven rejoices when people come to the Lord. And, and the good shepherd goes after the lost sheep, the one that is strayed away. I don't know if you've ever read a, a, a shepherd's look at Psalms 23, but it's a wonderful, wonderful book. It gives you a perspective of, of, a, of, of Psalms 23 from the viewpoint of a shepherd. And I learned a lot about sh shepherding in that book and understanding how, how sheep need tending. Amen? The, and, and, and this sheep uh, that we're talking about, sheep that we're talking about, the major means of support for many of them in that day was from the shepherd. Uh, they were wayward and, and, and defenseless. They needed constant supervision. And, I, and Steve Brake, a, a gentleman from the Valley View Church, and, and he was in the, in, in the desert and, uh, during, I think, uh, there's a storm or whichever one. But anyhow, the, the, the thing is, he said, the place where they were stationed at there was a there was a a, a, a lot of shepherds and 
and they would come in at nighttime to a valley and and one would come from this way and one would come from this way and and they would they would sit together in, in under the fire or whatever at by night and and their sheep would be grazing or whatever and 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 the thing is when morning came the sh the shepherd would start going out and they would just start talking or yelling out the name or whatever and their sheep would separate and follow the shep their their shepherd it's amazing how much they depend and need constant supervision. I think in the book of that I'm talking about, the shepherds look at Psalms 23. If if they get on their back, they can't get up. They wonder. They they start grazing, and before they know, it, you know it, they're 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 away from the rest of the sheep. The parable here pictures the care of God for wayward people. You hear what I'm saying? There are some that find themselves away from the flock that need attention. Now, the second picture is that of a woman who lost a coin. Verses 8 through 10. It says this, Oh, what woman having ten silver coins if one loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together rejoicing, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. My friend, it was a small coin of little value. I don't know about you, but when I was young, I picked up pennies that I found along the way. Amen? Because you could go to the, you could go to the store back then and buy some bubble gum with two or three cents. In fact, most of it was probably a penny back then, if I'm not mistaken. You you could you could go out and collect pop bottles, which was a, a no coin, but you could turn it in for five, and uh, I think it finally got up to ten cents. And and you could actually take those pop bottles to the store and get, if it was a six pack of uh, Coke or or Pepsi or whatever bottles, you you could get sixty cents or thirty cents, and you could buy a lot of candy then. But today, I've seen my grandkids. I've seen I've seen even adults. I still pick them pennies up myself. To be honest with you, but they'll they'll see it on the ground. And they'll just keep on walking. It's of little value. It's of little value. You can't buy anything. I don't think today for a penny. It's almost the only good thing it's for is for Uncle Sam to get taxes because usually when you buy something, it always has to have three or four cents instead of an equal nickel or dime or whatever. It was of little value. It was important enough, however, to this woman that she searched diligently. She swept and she got down on her hands and knees and, and had her lantern out. And, and, and when she found it, she what? She rejoiced. <laughs> You know, we may feel unimportant. But the truth of the matter is that our Father earnestly searches for each one of us. We talked just the other day about how He's looking for us. <laughs> he chose us as we talked to the team last was it last week he chose us he searches for us Randy mentioned it in his or, or Gary, maybe it was Gary in his prayer unless the Holy Spirit tugs at our heart we're not going to come we're not going to repent we're not going to turn away from our wickedness to God each and every one of us is important however the third picture is of 
the lost son. The lost son is one that really speaks to a lot of people today. You see, in verses 11 through 24, it says this. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portions of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, then he arose a, then there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And then he went and joined himself to a citizen of the, that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, I love that. That, 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 that fits so many, many of us. When we come to ourselves, when we come to our senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will rise and go to the Father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great far away off, his father saw him and had what? Compassion had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. The young man, my friend, in this parable rebelled against his father to his own peril. Rebellion usually leads to us in a hard spot. When we know the ways of God and we don't follow those ways, I'm telling you, difficult times will come. It reminds me of a sermon title that I'm going to work up one of these days and I've been saying that for about 20 years now. Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you're willing to pay. Sin will take you down a road that eventually will cost you your soul if we're not careful. And this young man found himself in a, in a, in a pig pen wanting to eat pig food and he was so hungry. And after testing the fruit of his sin, he came to his sense, senses. He came to realize of his, his folly and, and he, he returned to the, his father's house only to be a servant. And God, my friend, wants you and me to know, He wants us to know that His arms are always wide open to all who repent and return to Him. God has never failed me yet. <laughs> well, let's take out the yet. God will never fail you. You may turn your back on Him. You may, you, may, you may take off and go and do your own thing in life. But my friend, God is not going to forsake you. We forsake Him. We get out of His will. We go our own way. God wants you to know that 
in those times when you find yourself in a bottomless pit or, or in a pig pen or whatever it might be, His arms, isn't that a beautiful picture of the cross? His arms are still wide open. Jesus used each of these parables. All three of these parables He used to show you and me why it is that He receives sinners. Verse 1 and 2. It says this in the passage this evening. It says, Then all the tax collectors and what? The sinners. Tax collectors were considered sinners. Uh, and, 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 and they were probably, it sounds like they were on the top of the list. He said to the tax collectors and the sinners, and, and they drew near him to hear what he had to say, to hear him. And who? The Pharisees and the scribes were complaining, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. The top of the food chain when it comes to sinners was the tax collector. And, 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 they, and, and here it is. They come to Jesus. The, all the sinners, the, the prostitutes, the, 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 the whatever, you name it, they came to Jesus. They wanted to hear what He had to say. Every human being, my friend, has equal value. There is God is not a a respecter of persons. He loves each and every soul. Every human is of value to our Lord and God. And Jesus never denied the charge that was brought against Him in this passage. He never denied the charge that He received sinners. Oh, if the world would just say that about us. You know, I know my life isn't right. I know my life isn't what God wants it to be. But you know what? Those people down there in that little church, they love me anyhow. You, you see, the parable that we're talking about in these passages tonight, they're parables that picture to you and me lost humanity. It pictures you to you and me, my, our family, our friends, our co-workers, those in our world today. In these parables, Jesus teaches us that people without God are lost. It doesn't matter their sin. You hear what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Sin is sin. Whether it's lying or the worst thing you can think up tonight, it's still people without God. And people without God are lost. And, and Jesus, never once did He call them sinners. He called them lost. They were, they were lost to the, the presence and the protection and the, and the provisions from the Heavenly Father. They were lost to all these things in life. Some people, some people are lost in the way the sheep were lost in the story of the, the lost sheep. The sheep did not deliberately run away they knew where their protection was. They knew where they were safe. They knew if they got into trouble, if a wolf came or if they fell on their back or whatever, they knew where the protection was. They knew there was a good shepherd. They knew there was someone who cared about them and would provide for them. But the sheep did not deliberately run away. It just simply wandered off. Life circumstances can get us down a wandering path away from the... Start missing church for whatever reason, sickness or whatever, and before long it can become a habit of missing church. 
Some people are like that. They, they, you see them and they're active and involved in church and in the things of God. And before you know it, you, 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 they start missing here and there and, 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 and they get away from the things of fellowship and, and so forth and so on. Before you know it, you look around and you know what? I've not seen so-and-so for a few Sundays now. Simply edge away or, or step by step, they, they begin to wander away from the things of God. Some people are lost in the same way that the coin was lost. The, the carelessness of someone also contributed to the problem. The woman was not careful with the coin and she lost the coin. The carelessness of someone else can contribute to someone leaving the faith. There are different stages in our spiritual journey. Amen? We can't expect a born-again, brand-new, born-again Christian to be or like the way that God wants you to be who has been in the church for years now. And we can't expect this out of them in, in, in like manner and say things and do things and, and, and drive people not only away, but maybe to be less used for the purpose that God has them. We all have a purpose. We all have a gift. And God wants us to use it. And when we become critical and when we become men and women who think that they should do it this way or that way, it contributes to the problem of their wandering away or it can contribute to it. And many people have difficult difficulty in their lives because of, of the failings of others. Some people are lost in the same way the son was lost. He left with full awareness of what he was doing. He knew, uh, it, I mean, he was taken care of. And he knew that when dad passed away, he was going to be taken care of. But he didn't care. He wanted to do his own thing. Someone, know anyone like that? Has. Any one of us done that? <laughs> I wanted to do my own thing. And I, I, I left the, 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 the comfort of what I knew God wanted me to do when I was a young person. And, 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 and we, had no, we have no one to blame but ourselves. We determined to go our own way. And for the difficulty in which this prodigal son found himself is sometimes the only thing that can bring us back. And so the parable shows us, parables show us of God's care and compassion for those who are lost. But it also, there are also parables that reflect God's attitude toward lost humanity. The lesson of these parables is that the Father, God, wants to have fellowship with His people regardless of what they have done. His desire clear back in the Garden of Eden was to walk with humankind. Walk with Adam and Eve in the coolness of the day. And just like the prodigal son, many people today are living beneath their privilege. Beneath the blessing that God wants to bestow in our lives. It is one, of, it is one thing, folks, to, uh, to accept sinners. It's another thing to go looking for them. You hear what I'm saying? We can sit here this 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 evening and say we 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 want 
people to come no matter what they've done. But it's another thing to go out into all the world looking for the lost. The first two parables clearly teach about a God who is seeking an individual. In these parables, there is rejoicing when the lost are found. Jesus said in verse 10, He said, I tell you, there is more rejoicing in the presence of the angels over over." of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Both of those parables point that out. It's amazing that this parable or these two parables points that out. Uh, In the parable of the uh, the prodigal, they proclaim the, the not only the joy of restoration, but my friend, they are they are telling us that that uh, not only does God desire that that fellowship and and rejoices over those things that are lost, but there's great celebration when 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 things come about being found. His experience to the uh, the, the prodigal son was the son throwing his life away until he returned and his experience in the pig pen was that lowest point in his life a place of an imaginable place for a Jewish person because of the uncleanliness of the animal itself with, with, with God's word and when he came to himself when he came to himself and returned to the father there then there was a great celebration the father didn't go out looking. The son came returning. When the woman found the lost coin, she had a great time of rejoicing. When the when the shepherd found the lost sheep, he celebrated as well. And all of these people or parables teach us that God longs to have that fellowship with you and me. You see, church. Christ is assuring us through this passage and through the rest of His Word and in our midst tonight that He receives sinners. They are important to Him. So much so that He said, Not my will, but Thy will be done, Father, in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was willing to suffer, to be beaten, to be mocked and ridiculed, and eventually nailed to a cross because he he, he done it not for the righteous but for those who were lost. And he searches for lost even still today, and He stands ready to receive anyone who returns to Him. I'm thankful for that tonight. I really... I was baptized when I was little. Jesse was mentioned about double baptisms. Well, I I, I am one. I was baptized when I was a young little boy knowing what I was getting into. I knew what it meant to be a Christian. But I sort of straight off started doing things as I mentioned last week because of peer pressure and, and wanting to fit in and so forth and so on. And found myself in a place of the lowest point in my life. And I the testimony I gave last night I wanted to share a lot about that but I did say this I did say that it was only because of me coming and trusting in the Lord with all my heart and leaning on my own understanding 
that I am standing here tonight. I'm, I'm telling you, I was, I was straying away, and I stand here tonight, and I'm saying publicly to all of you, I am glad that Jesus receives sinners. Where would any of us be tonight if that wasn't so? What path were you going down? What path were you brought out of? Were you like the lost sheep or the lost coin? Or were you like the prodigal son? My friend, he received me that night or that day. I don't know if Chrissy even knew what was going on. When I got up from the pew, from at Fairmont First Church of the Nazarene and came to an altar, knelt down there by myself. I think the only one that whole day during that message, I think I was the only one to come forward. And Brother Rawlings preached a message, and I can't tell you what that message was to this day. All I know is I sat on that pew as long as I could, and I thanked God when he finally gave an invitation. Oh, how important it is to give the invitation. You hear what I'm saying? We've got as ministers, and Linda and PK, you can, you can take this to the bank. We've got to give the invitations. We can't just say, okay, that's how God is. Have a good day. We've got to give the people a choice. To make a decision for Christ. You might say well preacher everybody does. No they don't. In fact there's some churches today. That don't even have altars in their churches anymore. I don't know. That's not very inviting to me. May God help us if we ever get to that place. And I'm thankful I was able to do that at Fairmont First Church. And to you, he probably done the same thing. Somewhere, whether it was a church altar or an altar at your home, somewhere where you got alone with God and you asked to re for him to receive you and for you to take him into your life. And aren't you thankful for that tonight? Aren't you thankful for the decision that you have made in Christ and thankful tonight that he received sinners? Praise God. Praise God. Now, I think this is when I go back and give Sharon the hanky and let her run the aisles for us tonight. <laughs> so good, Sharon, to, to see you up and about. My friend, it's, it's that simple. Our God receives sinners. In John, or Luke 15, tells us tonight all about how he goes about doing that why he does it Amen let's stand tonight well, Father we do thank you for your word and we're so thankful so thankful Father that you received sinners that you came to save that which was lost and Lord, that can mean a couple things to me tonight. First of all, the sinner. But more importantly, the image of God that was marred in the Garden of Eden because of man's sin. And you came to restore us into a relationship with God. Into what you desired from us in the very beginning, that was fellowship. Sometimes we focus more on wanting to get to heaven than enjoying the presence of God in our lives and the fellowship that we can have right now and how we can live in the kingdom of God right now and how we can have life and have it more abundantly right now. So Lord, it's more than just saying a prayer to make it to heaven. It's saying a prayer so we can get closer to you, to love you as you loved us and to be obedient to your word and to love others and have compassion 
on who they are and for their souls. And Father, I pray tonight that you would give us that compassion so so deep and so real in our lives that we will go into all the world that we would go into our workplaces, that we would go into the places that we, we shop or, or do business, or we would go into our schools or, or, or wherever or wherever you lead us and, and, and seek out the lost and, and call the, the wayward one back to you tonight. Lord, where would I be tonight if I preached about an invitation and not give it tonight. Lord, I don't know the hearts of men, women, but you do. You know where I am tonight. You know what I've been doing. You know everything there is about about me. You're 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 all present. You you know everything there is going on in our lives. And so Father, if if tonight, if if we're just needing to get alone with you for a moment, May that be right now. Maybe maybe it has nothing to do with some way that we're drifting away or saying that we're lost, but we just maybe it maybe to, to be challenged, Lord, to have more compassion. And so I want to give the invitation tonight for whatever reason, if God has spoke to your heart any today or at any time or if you just want to get alone, we, we want to offer you the, the time to do that tonight. So just slip out of your pew tonight if that's you and just come get alone. As Randy said earlier, it's, if you can't kneel at the, at, the, at, the, at the altar, maybe just sit on the front pew and just talk with God for a while, anyone at all. Lord, we, we thank you. We pray that you would go with each and every one of us. Help us, Father, this week to, uh, to follow your, your direction and, and to be the people that you want us to be. And may we glorify you in all that we do. For it's in Christ's name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Shake hands with one another and you may be dismissed. Go with God.